Okay, this one is just all my Heathkit amplifiers uh, lined up before I take them to the dungeon and put them away. Uh, this is all of them that I have, at least with Heathkit amplifiers, good and bad, old and young, new and old and working or not. So at the top, you know, I recently done this one, went through it. This is a Heathkit SB200. Actually, I think it was an SB201, and somebody put that sticker over the top with the 200. The difference is, um, from the factory, the later 201 didn't have 10 meters in it. And as you can see on the dial here, no 10 meters, you know, from the factory. However, this one has been monobanded, um, and basically only works on 10 meters only uh, with the monoband. This one is kind of rough, you know, looking, scratches and wear and all that. Um, but it does work. Got decent 572 Vs in it. Basically, five 600 watts out the thing. Um, so that's my heat kit SB200 or slash 201 um, 10 meter mono bandit. Um, I guess I'll start over here to the uh, left and go left to right at the bottom this here is a heat kit SB2 221 um, and the reason I say that it's got 15 meters um, no 10 meters uh, basically the updated uh, SB220 and again uh, with the tighter FCC regulations about 10 meter amplifiers back during the CB boom because any 10 meter amplifier will work on 11 meters unless you got a special circuit in there to block 11 meters only or to block 11 and 10 which a lot of amplifiers did once the regulations were tightened up but what the heat kit did with the going from the SB220 to the 221 is they got rid of 10 meters on the band switch it doesn't have uh, 10 meter wafers or the the junction on the the uh, switch on the wafer for 10 meters both the input and the output they got rid of 10 meters and on the uh, 221 they also put in a thing they called a filter on the input side and that filter was a um, notch filter that notched out uh, 10 and 11 meters only um, so this amplifier from the factory could not be used for 10 or 11 meters. Um, I've said it a few times. I had a, uh, a buddy back then who had one, and he drove it with the Phantom 500. You know, 500 in, 1,000 out. That's all he was getting out of it. Um, and the reason was that uh, input filter was blocking uh, the input watts. So very little of the watts were going actually through, and it was nasty and distorted. And I think that's what killed him. Um, he got brain cancer by running that um, combination on his desk in front of his face for many, many years. Um, when I got the amp, I did convert it um, to 10 meters only. And then, you know, drove it with, I don't know what it was, but with 100 watts, he was getting about, you know, 1,800 out of it. He was a happy camper, but, you know, not too long after that, he got brain cancer and passed. So that's that story on that. But this this one I have not went through yet. It's one I picked up, uh, Junkie Junker. Mostly picked it up for parts, but you know, except for tubes, it's and the uh, meter there um, looks fairly complete. Looks decent enough. It's been mono banded already. Not my me. Like I said, I don't have. I haven't had my hands in it yet. So. I was thinking of using that for parts. However, uh, we'll go back to that a little bit later. Next is the uh, Venerable Heathkit HL2200. This was the last um, of the series of the SB220. Um, basically, it's a SB220 or 221 because it didn't have 10 meters in it either. Um, but it was a SB221, just they, they changed the case and the color and the style and all that to match their newer equipment. You know, in the 80s, um, people kind of got tired of the ugly green and all that, you know, plain industrial look. And they wanted something more modern and cool looking. So he kit went with uh, this color on a lot of their equipment. 
and other than the color and the uh, style and the cosmetics there's very little difference between the uh, SB221 you know 15 to 80 meters you know dual 3 500 Z's and this amp online they say a uh, couple of the minor differences are the meters aren't backlit uh, and on the uh, SB220s they were and one other thing that I didn't notice at first but once they mentioned it it's got this added switch over here it's got a standby switch and the hands were like yay they finally put a standby switch on the heat kit amplifier so the uh, uh, earlier SBs did not have a standby switch um, and that's basically uh, like I said other than cosmetics is the difference since this one has also been mono banded uh, 10 meters only on it um, this one I got complete and working uh, from a local who's a amp building expert uh, I would say better than me uh, one of the few I think that is better than me a local I'm not gonna mention his name and just put that out there but um, I bought it from him uh, for a good price he was getting rid of it and I'm like hey I'll take that uh, so he sold it to me this one um, does have all the ham bands in it it's been modified a little bit um i know it's got the bias in there um a couple relay extra relays for the switching the wimpy uh the the relay in the uh he kit sp220s is kind of wimpy from the factory and this one has a few upgrades in it um i like it and he did um put a uh, a standby switch on it again i just said that originally heat kit did not have a standby switch on the amplifiers and even hams uh, like what the heck's that about so the uh, person who rebuilt this amp the master builder I'll call him um, he put that switch on there it looks factory but it's not that switch is um, added and that's the standby switch other than that you know he did some good mods on it uh, you know quality mods the bias the power supply um, soft start if I remember right um, it's a better amplifier and it has all the the ham bands the only one I think up here 10 through 80 meters nice shape nice amp I like it I like that one I like that one um, and then this is a junkie junker um, that I bought recently uh, only reason I bought it because um, I got it for a song and a dance and a price I think I got this one local also recent haven't went through it or nothing yet but what I'm figuring is since this one is no tubes of course but mostly complete and I said I'd get back to that other one over here another one that that looks a little bit better than that one uh, mostly complete I figure between these two you know that one there and this junkie junker here uh, we'll do a complete one and uh, get it together and get it working uh, someday you know another project um, but we ain't in no hurry for that because we got this one um, you know all the ham bands we got that one we like just because it's modern and it's you know fairly rare and then we got the smaller um, heat kit SB 200 uh, with the 572 B's in it even though I'm not a fan of the 572 B's you only get about uh, 500 watts out of a pair uh, some amplifiers like Dentron and and uh, MFJ they got one with four 572 B's in it and you can get um you know uh, with four maybe about 1200 out of it if everything else is up to snuff um, these are mostly the later heat kit amplifiers heat kit did make some earlier amplifiers um shoot i'm having a brain moment where they made one with uh, four 811 a's in it a very early one um a big um boat anchor beast but um i don't like 572 b's with 165 watt dissipation and then 811 a's have 65 watts dissipation each so you know four of them is 260 watts dissipation and I like to say that you know I always go by dissipation so bird watch you'll get 260 maybe 300 bird out of that big old giant um, 4811A amplifier boat anchor and then you might get 500 peak watts out of it that's that's about it um, I think I'd rather have the uh, compact um, 
SB200 series before I'd rather have that beast even though you know they look big and impressive um, you know back then um, they used bigger transformers and swinging chokes and and just parts were you know bigger and you know they didn't make them compact and upgraded like this so I rather have the um, the smaller compact amp that actually does more power than the big um, beast but he could also did make um, I think it's the Chippewa um, which had dual Ford S 400s in it and um, I like Ford S 400s they do a little bit less than a 3500 Z however since they're four dash tetros they can be turbocharged and turbocharge if you don't know what I mean by that um, amplifiers or tubes that have that tetro and they use the uh, screen grid and apply power to it and I call that turbocharging they don't do more watts you can't you know beat plate dissipation I've said that many many times however what turbocharging does is you need a lot less drive um, since the FCC was frowning on the CB amps um, again uh, they made amplifiers that you had to have a hundred watt drive at one time and hence the grounded grid triode was very popular you know less part counts you know you didn't need to turbocharge it or, or how the voltage and and um, it was high drive you didn't need a driver uh, again less parts you just put plate voltage on it at the ground you drive it um, didn't necessarily need tune input because a grounded grid amplifier uh, the tubes input resistance on most tubes um, like a 3500 Z if I remember right the uh, tube input resistance was 100 ohms per tube so a pair of 3500Zs on the input side will be 50 ohms I think the 572Bs was um, 120 ohms if I remember right per tube so a pair of them the input was 60 ohms you know pretty close to a, a, a good input match without using any type of uh, input tuner or anything however since that resistance floats up and down as the uh, tube conducts up and down uh, that resistance kind of changes a little bit so even though it's like 50 average it will float you know uh, maybe to 150 at one part and maybe dip to 25 you know in another part and an input tuner will help smooth that out so it's always good to have a input tuner on an amplifier even though many uh, ham amplifiers um, and CB amplifiers too did not use one um, why do uh, amplifiers not use an input tuner cost you know I get people like why did they do this why do they do that cost they trying to make money um, um, you know if, if you want to build a uh, amplifier near perfect amplifier that will do you know the same watts like an alpha you know it costs two three times more you know to get the same watts than something like a heat kit um, so you pay for what you get um, okay I think I went through everything on this one even got a little long on it this is my heat kit collection um, at least for now I did want a Chippewa wanted to play with uh, Ford S 400 amps because they're low drive and you know can eliminate the uh, driver tube and you know driving with 5 watts 10 watts but those are hard to find don't want the uh, warrior that's the one with the uh, 811A's um, heat kit warrior not the DNA uh, warrior the same people that make phantom the DNA people uh, they made a uh, warrior which I think was four small tubes driving four uh, big tubes driving eight was the DNA warrior and then the heat kit warrior had uh, just four 811's in it um, all right this is it for my little heat kit rant on this one okay bye